Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church in Gladewater, Texas. Is that better? We're so glad to have you here, either online or here in person this morning. It's good to see you here, bright and shiny. Um, and the sun shining, too. I know it makes it really humid out there, but gosh, we've had uh, rain this week and sunshine and everything is so pretty and green. It's really great. Well, the cross is still bare and the tomb is still empty. God is still on His throne and Jesus sits at His right side. Jesus still walks through the storms. And we can still walk with Him as long as we keep our focus on Him and not on the storm. So this morning, let's worship in the name of the Lord. Let's stand and sing. We're going to sing out the Coast Mary. We're singing Church in the Wildwood.
I did not introduce myself earlier. I didn't do that at the first service either. My name is Dean Hanson. I am the lay leader for First United Methodist Church here in Gladewater, Texas. Um, I am an interim as such in that uh, last week was Pastor David Lee's uh, last week here. Uh, they were moved this weekend and they are going to be in uh, First United Methodist Church over in Longview starting next week. Uh, David will take on position as an assistant pastor over there. So we wish them well and we appreciate David and Beth and the girls as they were here and want the best for them. Also next week, our new pastor, Bud Miller, will be coming here. Uh, Bud was at Wesley McCabe Baptist, or Methodist Church in uh, Longview. In fact, uh, years ago, his dad was preacher at that church. And then uh, as the family went on through things, Bud became preacher over there. So we'll be glad to have him here. He texted me earlier this morning and said he was praying for us this morning and looking forward to being here next week to worship with us in person. So we'll be looking forward to that. Any uh, prayer requests, praises, or concerns this morning? Anybody? Okay, I've got a uh, prayer request myself. I would ask for, uh, for prayer for me. I have an MRI this coming Thursday. Uh, I have been diagnosed with prostate cancer. It's in the early stages, uh, but it is something that runs in my family, so there was some current concern there. And they have found some cancer. Uh, the MRI is to determine um, whether I can go with a radiation treatment or if I'm going to have to have surgery. So I'm praying for the radi radiation treatment on this. So I would appreciate the prayers there. Um, any others, prayers or concerns? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Father, seeking your presence here and throughout the world as people continue to praise and worship you in their homes, at work, in their cars, wherever they can, Father. We just pray your Holy Spirit's presence with them. Father, we uh, pray for David Lee as he begins his new ministry in Longview. We pray for Bud and his wife Debbie as they come to Gladewater to be with us, to worship with us, and Father, to lead this church. Father, we pray for our nation. We pray for the illness that is striking down so many and affecting so many lives. Father, we just pray for those who work in the background, our doctors, our nurses. We pray for those who work in research to develop vaccines for this virus, Lord. And most of all, we pray your healing on our land, both physically and spiritually. Father God, we raise all these things up in the powerful and healing name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, we're not taking the offering, and you leave the offering in the bucket out there, that's it. But we're going to sing the doxology, so if you'll stand.
Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Colossians, chapter 3. We're splitting this up just a little bit. It's going to be chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, and then verses 12 through 17. And I just lost my place. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. gotten very loud and very angry. The conversation is dividing and corrosive. The poison of hate is infecting even those who have never voiced opinions either way before. We've been sucked into the whirlpool of slander and lies. Who's right? Who's wrong? And we're in danger of losing our spiritual lives with Christ in exchange for worldly lives dominated by fear and politics and false teachings. This is Satan's job, to lie and to divide, to separate us from God. It has been his job from the very beginning. 
Now this is similar to what Paul is addressing with the church in the city of Colossae. There was no rioting, but loud voices had become louder and louder, trying to drown out the truth of the gospel and the teachings of Jesus Christ. There was an emphasis on false teachings, combining some beliefs of Christianity with other religious and worldly beliefs. There was an emphasis on religious and outside leaders' authority over scriptural teachings and doctrines. Thus, Christ's preeminence and authority in matters of social obedience and understanding were being undermined. Paul was communicating over the loudness that Christ is the center and that anything that is added to that subtracts from the power that Jesus alone gives to lead the Christian life. Now, Colossae was an important commercial center. It was located on a heavily traveled road because of all the trading and the business that was done there. There were travelers from all over with a wide variety of backgrounds, ideologies, and experiences. It was a melting pot. Now our situation today is very similar in that our nation is representative of the whole world with thoughts and races, traditions and ideals coming from a collection of beliefs and experiences. For instance, you and your neighbor may both like to fish. And you fish as a hobby or for a sport. You do it for relaxation and fun. But your neighbor fishes for a living. His family's well-being depends on it. You both have a similar interest, but it is much more meaningful impact on one than on the other. In today's scripture, Paul is reminding the Colossians who they are in Christ, how they got there, and what it means to put Him above all others. Let's relook at verses 1 through 4. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. If we are truly raised or reborn with Christ, then we should seek His leadership and His wisdom first. His authority is proven since He sits at the right hand of God. As Christians, we should think differently and act differently than the rest of the world. When people hear and are see us, they should be seeing Christ because we have placed Him in front of us, not beside us and not behind us. Our Heavenly Father and our Heavenly Future depends on it. Now don't misunderstand me. Do not remove, we do not remove ourselves from the conversation. Paul never removed himself from a conversation. And we do not have to agree. He did not always agree with everyone he had a conversation with. But we have a different kind of conversation from a different viewpoint. It should be open and constructive, always leading people to Christ's teachings. Yelling as loud as the other person does not 
bring any new viewpoints to the forefront. If we look and act as angry as the other person, then it is no longer a conversation. It has become a war. Now God gave us two ears set on either side of our brain and one mouth in front like a horn because we should be listening with the wisdom that God has given us twice as much as we should be blowing our own horn and trying to drown out everyone else. Let's listen to Paul's advice in verses 5 through 10. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked. In other words, we're no different. We've done all of these ourselves. In these you two have walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. There is none who goes before us that is any more sinful than ourselves. This goes back to Jesus' teaching on judging others way back in Luke chapter 6, verses 41 through 42. Jesus says, Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck that is in your brother's eye. Jesus uses some conflicting words with us sometimes to get our attention, like hypocrite and you of little faith. We often find ourselves fighting this for the same principle, but on different sides. We have to seek the higher ground, and it has to be noticeable. All of these earthly desires that we have, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, these are all basic idols in our lives because we have placed them before Jesus. Now we should get rid of all kinds of anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk. It is this kind of idolatry that brings on the wrath of God. We live in a sinful world. We learned our sinful ways in it. And they are a part of us. But they don't have to represent us. Having been of the world and now in Jesus Christ, we must see the triggers to our sin and avoid them. It is not who we are anymore. Remembering that sin is our weakness and our strength is in the Lord. We cover this in Celebrate Recovery. Principle 5 states, Voluntarily submit to every change that God wants to make in my life and humbly ask Him to remove my character defects. Happy are those whose greatest desire 
is to do what God requires, Matthew 5, 6. I think we could all use a little more happiness in this world today. Hear it again. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. Now, in Celebrate Recovery, we have eight principles and 12 steps that coincide with each other. There's two steps that go with this principle. The first one is step six, and it states, we were entirely ready to give God, or to have God remove all these defects of character. The accompanying biblical scripture is James 4.10. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. Our sin makes us weak, but God is our strength. And step seven says, we humbly ask Him to remove all our shortcomings. 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sins, <clears throat> He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now let me show you how important that is, especially today. This is a scripture that is being used widely everywhere today. But I want you to listen to it closely. Sometimes we get hear it so often that we read past the meaning. This is from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people... Notice it doesn't say, if everyone. It says, if my people, who are called by my name, who are we? We're Christians. We are called by the name of Jesus Christ. So if my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves, Humble, we admit our own sin and we ask forgiveness of that sin. So if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Again, he's talking to us. We must acknowledge God is our power and repent from our sins or change. Here's a little word, then. We hear a lot of if-thens in our lives. If you did this, then this would happen. Okay, so here we go. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, in other words, all of the above is what we need to do first. That separates our task from God's promise. And here's His promise. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. It's not up to the news media. It's not up to the politicians. It's between us and God. And we need to step up. It is that log in our eye that must be removed in order for us to be heard above the loudness. Why are you angry? God asked this same question of Cain in Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, Sin is crouching at the door. It desi its desire is for you, 
and you must rule over it. So avoid the things that make you angry. And if you can't avoid them, then approach them in a different manner. See not just the sins of others, but first seeing our own sin. People will tell you what they want you to hear. God's going to tell you what you need to hear. We are not Christ. We will not handle things exactly as He would, but to be more Christ-like and to know how to better handle the loudness of today, you must become knowledgeable from the words of the teacher. Let's move on to verses 12 through 14. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you. So you almost also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. There's an old saying that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Because you have been chosen by God as one of His, then we must also choose to put on His righteousness. This is not an easy task, even in good times. But our strength does not rely on our own abilities but once again on the power of God. Of all of the sins that we have committed against God and against others, He has found a way to forgive us. As children, when we were caught doing wrong, we wanted to know that no matter what the punishment was, that our parents still forgave us and still loved us. Jesus said that we will have our own cross to bear. And as He hung on His cross, He looked around to all of His accusers who put Him there and simply asked, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's easy to look around today and see similar crowds and knowing that the cross of Jesus Christ bridge the divide between our sin and our forgiveness, then we must also be willing to forgive. Remembering that forgiveness is spiritual, but accountability is worldly, and we are all held accountable when we break civil law even though we are forgiven spiritually when Christ is our Savior and we repent from our sins. So let's finish up with verses 15 through 17. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ giving thanks to God the Father through Him. We are the church universal. Members of one body, the body of Christ. Although we are different parts, 
The fact that we are one reminds us that we are united in our belief that Jesus Christ is the one and only Son of God. And when we give our lives to Him in faith and ask for forgiveness and repent of our sins, we are forgiven. And just as Christ sits at the right hand of God the Father in heaven, then we too are all heirs in His kingdom. His people. In God's Word, my people. Black, white, brown, Asian, are all given one title without separation. He calls us my people. His people. As one body, we should be united together to share the gospel message to the rest of the world. Can you imagine people of all walks of life from around the world joining together as one and proclaiming Jesus Christ as King, worshiping together, singing together, giving thanks together, forgiving each other and recognizing one another in the name of Christ. One small, tiny voice turning into a multitude that can't be drowned out by the loudness of the world today. And then becoming one voice together, putting on love and doing all things in the name of Jesus Christ because we are one with Him as well. And giving thanks to God the Father through Jesus the Son. Can you imagine what it'll be like? I can only imagine. Oh, I 
beyond our imagination what it'll be like to be with you. Father, help us to grasp just a small piece of that in our own lives as we reflect you to the world. Father, help us to imagine on a daily basis before we speak or act what would it be like with you ahead of us and us behind. Following in your footsteps, Lord. Bringing about a desire for peace in a world that does not know you. And that's our job, is to help them to know you. Father, be with us as we converse with the world. Pray for your peace, Lord. Pray for your healing. Father, most of all, we pray for your strength and your encouragement to each of us to go out and shine your light into this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Closing hymn. So, wonderful words of life. Let's stand, please.
forget to be here next week uh, to welcome Bud Miller and his wife Debbie with us. Now, with God's blessings, we pray you go out into the world, share the love and grace that, li that Christ has given us with others, and show the light of God in our own actions. God be with you, and peace to you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you.